Hey guys, how you doing? So uh, I went ahead and uh, started filming this reaction a little bit ago and I had to start it over again. Just letting you guys know because uh, I got a phone call in the middle and then it basically stopped uh, and cut off the screen recording. So starting over again. So I've already seen about the first half of this music video. I'm going to try to cut back on what I was saying earlier, like condense it I guess because I was saying a lot of shit because it's got me thinking a lot. But anyway, uh... I'm just gonna hop into it, man. I uh, hope y'all are having uh, a good week. It's uh, fucking Tuesday, and I am really fucking ready for Friday. <laughs> and then next week, I got a field exercise. So I'm, gonna be, I'm not gonna be on the internet at all for about like five days. So if y'all don't see me on there, that's why. Oh, yeah, and Church said this is gonna be a tear jerker on his, on his Instagram, so I guess we'll see about the video. And like I said, I've already seen my half of it. Half of it, but we'll see. The friends I got are the same ones from high school. Half of them driver got the same damn drugs, too. CB hanging from the mirror, talking smack to truckers. Tired from driving roads, calling us little motherfuckers. Same cops in town since I was 15, barefoot, walking all the way. So you know, I know what it's like living in a town like that. Cause uh, you know, I was living in Broadway, which is this little fucking farm town, 250 people. It's in Northwest Jersey, and it's real close to the Pennsylvania line. It's about like 10 minutes. So uh, I ended up actually hanging out in Pennsylvania more than I did in Jersey. To be honest with you, cause Jersey sucks, but fucking. Anyway, um, the the whole thing about this song and the music video just really like you know, reinforces it, I guess, is, um, fucking, you know, Church grew up in the same town, pretty much barely moved at all as a kid, I think he moved once, they meant, I think he mentioned one time maybe, but like, he ne he stayed in Cheatham County for his whole, you know, young life, you know, as a kid, all his memories are there, um, and, uh, I mean, I wish, <laughs> I mean, there's parts of the song I could say I relate to, but there's a lot of it I can't because the main thing about it is, you know, being from the same town and living there pretty much your whole life, hardly ever really leaving. Uh, you know, I mean, travels a lot because of shows and it did live up in West Virginia for a while, but, you know, that didn't last along with some other things, but, you know, uh, which probably was for the best, you know, I'm guessing, whatever, it's not my business really, so... But, you know, I just remember, like, him talking about coming back to Cheatham County and being like, man, you know, this is where I'm from, this is where, I, you know, I grew up, and I, I you know, I realized, like, this is where I'm supposed to be, you know. And uh, I noticed a lot, I noticed that a lot with people who, uh, who stay in the same town their whole life, and then they leave, you know, go to the big city and work these awesome jobs and have lots of excitement and, you know, hustle bustle and whatever, because that's what they think they should, they, that, that's what they think a good life is. And then they live it, and they get stressed out, and they, you know, go through multiple marriages and divorces, and uh, live a miserable life. And they realize that they've the, their true meaning of life has been passing them by, and uh, they want to go back to their hometown because they think that that's where they're going to find the answers that they're looking for onto why their lives have sucked so bad. Um, and uh, it's, man, I know a lot of people like that. I guess a lot of people, you know, they, they get to a certain age where they're just, they just want to go back to their hometown, you know, where it's quiet and it's peaceful, or at least that's how they remember it, and uh, and just go back to it, you know. Um, it just calls you back, I guess. And uh, church feels that, you know. Church knows where he belongs, you know. Cheatham County has a, has a place like that, you know. Me, I mean... Uh, I'm not gonna go through every single state, but I'll, I'll just I'll just tell you I've lived in just to keep down a reasonable number. I, I did this figuring. I mean, technically, we really only lived in uh, I guess you could say only seven states. But I mean, if you count uh, the states that I moved back, if you count uh, however many times I moved back to those two states because I've lived in New York twice and I, and I lived in Jersey twice. So the second time was for a very short time, but. Uh, about a month or so, month and a half, but um, 
total from from where, when I was born until uh, and counting where I've been since I've been in the army uh, as of January this year. Um, it all told is nine states, I believe. Yeah, nine states, and I've been to a lot more. And, and driven around a lot, been you know, on a lot of road trips and stuff. Nothing too crazy, but you know, definitely some pretty cool road trips and stuff. And been in a bunch of different states. So I know per, I've been to almost every state east of Mississippi, except for uh, Maine, Vermont, uh, New Hampshire. Although I've been right next to the Vermont line when I was up at Fort, Fort Ticonderoga, but I haven't been to Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, uh, Connecticut, Rhode Island. Um, and I haven't been to South Carolina, uh, Georgia, uh, Alabama, Mississippi, uh, Arkansas, I believe is, yeah, Arkansas is east of Mississippi, right? I think. I think. Uh, yeah. Um, and I've been pretty much every other state, you know, the whole tri-state area, you know, uh, you know, Virginia, West Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee, uh, you know, all this, North Carolina, Florida, now, you know, here, Louisiana, um, you know, all the states, uh, uh, Maryland, everything, uh, Delaware, all that. So, if, you know, I've, I've, I've traveled a lot. I mean, Oklahoma, uh, west of the Mississippi, I've been to Oklahoma, Iowa, Minnesota, uh, Illinois, yeah, I've I've been around a lot, y'all. <laughs> so, the point being, you know, I've never really gotten to put down roots in anywhere much for too long before having to move. And uh, I can't wait to get out of the military and just settle down somewhere, maybe somewhere between Nashville, I figure, and Knoxville, somewhere between, because it's kind of like East Tennessee, a little more than West, because I really like the hills, because it's just beautiful. But, uh, you know, East Tennessee's, I don't know. It's, I mean, do you got some liberals in Chattanooga and whatnot? I just don't want to be anywhere near any of that shit. But anyway, anyway, I'm just going to keep rolling with the video. It's just this this whole song just makes me, like, want to be able to put down roots and just, you know, experience that because I've never really been able to, not fully, you know. Shout out to my to my homie from my town. You know who you are. Uh, big time stoner, but his life goal is to be a cop, and he's ready and willing to put down that stuff and go to police academy and be uh, an officer of the law. So uh, I respect him for it, and uh, good luck with it, man. I'm not gonna say your name, but you know who you are if you watch this, man. Shout out to you. Uh, yeah, man. It's like people people don't don't realize that you know cops are people too, you know. Some of them are bad people, yeah, but just like with anywhere else, there's good people and there's bad people. There's, you know, both sides. They're humans, okay? I know, fucking mind-blowing, right? But, uh, yeah, man, and uh, not not every cop gets out of bed in the morning thinking about how many people they want to, you know, write a ticket or put in jail, man. So stop, you know, putting them all in the same box. You know, they don't belong there, you know? They're just doing their jobs. Well, most of them, they're just trying to do their jobs. Had a party every they come home safe to their family and not, you know, the wife, the kids, whatever, man. Like, just give them a break, honestly. They have one of the most, besides the military and uh, whatever, and and the other jobs like that, they want they have one of the highest stress jobs there is. Like, you know, I mean, it, the shit's going to weigh on you heavy. Anyway, moving on. An officer T.C. was waiting by the street at the top of Snake Hill, bust a ride. Slow by Mary Helen's watch for cows, you heard? The world turns I, 
Like, now, being from the sticks in the tri-state area, like, you know, uh, living in northwest Jersey, living in PA, uh, you know, being around the Alleghenies a lot in PA, in the, the fucking Adirondacks, the, in the Catskills in New York State, and out by the Finger Lakes region out that way, and, you know, and all that stuff. You know, there's a lot of hills, a lot of hilly, windy-ass roads, and if you're not from there, you don't know where you're going, and you don't, you, you underestimate how sharp a turn is, uh, you know, you get there and it's a damn near 90 degree turn and you go plant in a fucking tree and die. So, and it happens all the time. Uh, and it's the same thing down in East Tennessee, especially like a lot of hills and a lot of windy roads like that. Uh, Western North Carolina, you know, a lot of roads like that. Um, they have the Blue Ridge Parkway, <laughs> that's a good example. But, um, what was I going to say? Yeah, it's the same thing in Tennessee, you know, it's, uh, uh, oh yeah, 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 right, right, so Church in one of his lyrics videos a while back talked about Palm Creek Road, how there's a turn like that where a lot of people died because they didn't see, they didn't know that turn was there and they hit the, they hit the, the turn too fast, but then it was happening to fucking plant on the trees and get killed, so, yeah, um, you know, if you're, uh, from somewhere where all the, especially from a city where all the streets are like a grid, uh, you know, driving down country roads, it's kind of funny watching some people drive around there because they're like, you know, they get real scared and stuff. It's funny. Or when they're uh, going over a road crossing that has a fucking, like, I, I, you, I man, I fucking yeeted my S10 going over this, I about duked the shit out of that thing, man. There's this, there's this crossing on, like, it's not Steersville Road. I can't remember what the name of the road is, but like, um, the, the so the road tracks went right by my house, uh, you know, going east and, east and, you know, and west. Uh, it's just a single uh, short line that basically connects um, Norfolk Southern Main Line to, I believe, uh, another main line at the other end. Basically, it's kind of like kind of like bridges the gap, whatever. It used to be the Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western Railroad Main Line way, 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 way back in the day. Then it was Erie, Lackawanna, then Conrail, and then Norfolk Southern Absorb Conrail in, like, I believe, the late 80s, early 90s, somewhere around there, and that's what it's been ever since. Um, but... Anyway, so that crossing, you know, goes through that whole part of Warren Valley, uh, all the way into, you know, right to the uh, Peaberg Bridge as as you uh, as you go into Easton. Um, but basically, um, come on, brain work, work, work. Uh, but yeah, so there's this crossing. It's like this fucking bumpy ass road. You can like, I, I believe it was paved not long before I moved there. Honestly, like it was, cause it was one of the last dirt roads around there. I believe. Uh, because they paved them all now. Uh, the only dirt roads that are left in Warren County are pretty much private roads now. There's not a lot of public, there's not really any public dirt roads left other than the ones that go into parks and stuff. And even then, most of those are paved. But, uh, that crossing there on that road that connects Route 57 to, I believe it connects, I believe it connects Route 57 to Stewartsville Road. It's got a really sharp, um, incline going up, you know, on both sides of it, so, if you go too fast up on one side of it, you're gonna go flying, you know, down the other side. And uh, I knew, I knew that, so I fucking took my ass in. I mean, I gassed it. Then I, I braked a little bit right before I hit it, just so I didn't go completely fucking, you know, lose my shit, whatever. So I went flying over the tracks. I was airborne for probably like my wheels were off the ground for about a good 15, 20 feet, which uh, doesn't. It, it's not a lot. It doesn't sound like a lot, but man, when you come down, you know, it seems like a lot. <laughs> And uh, apparently, I was this close from completely fucking shitting out on the ground and having all my ball joints break on me. But miracle that it was, it was just enough for me to get home and then eventually find out that my ball, ball joints were fucked. And I went and got that fixed. It was expensive. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. And my outer tie rods, I believe my front outer tie rods too. Yeah. There was a bunch of shit in there that got fucked up. But it was fun though. I bow the shit out of it. <laughs> There's a lot of roads like that in the country, man, you know. It's the same thing. Anyway, it sales. Anyway, can keep going. Oh, yeah, and uh, think about the, uh, the girls painted toes and the boys playing G.I. Joe's. I'm going I'm to I'm talk about that later. I'm going to let the, some more of the song play.
Many blunts rode and close called dear. Just one more kiss and one more beer. Just one more bonfire dancing in a field. One more homecoming for a thousand more years. A thousand more coors like cans and a fit. For every country boy born for millions of years. I pray another generation live like we do. Where the world turns. See, yeah, so I'm going to talk about that right there. Um, the girls plant their. Paint the toes and the boys play G.I. Joe's. Sounds like a real simple statement, not much to think about. But I think Church is trying to say more with just that statement. I think what he's trying to say is, um, you know, uh, fucking, we live in a society now where everything that used to be considered normal and healthy and right is now wrong, patriarchal, misogynist, so on and so forth. When it has nothing to do with any of that, it's just the traditional views of men and women it has nothing to do with men being better uh or whatever or none of that bullshit brother none of this is about sexism none of this is about any of that stuff man it's like god made girls a certain way god made boys a certain way you know we are the way we are for a reason and that's okay you know and now, you know, we got these fucking 40-year-old man-childs wearing wigs and, you know, getting tits out on them and shit and wearing dresses and all kinds of weird shit and drag queens and stuff, you know, reading books for kids at the library and stuff. All this weird shit going on, man. And all this, all kid, little kids, little fucking kids, not even in grade school yet, getting exposed to gender theory and critical race theory and all this fucking stuff, man. And it's, it's fucked up, you know? Like, kids don't need to be exposed to that shit. Anyway, I'm a, I'm gonna keep going, man. But like, you think about it, that that little statement there has, has so much more meaning. And I wish, uh, I hope another generation of kids lives like we did. You know, I was, you know, my brother, you know, being in his mid to late thirties, he's kind of the last generation of kids, well, to gr to grow up completely completely without technology. Church was already in his probably mid teens when you know when iPhones were becoming a thing and whatnot. Um, you know, uh, like he was already, you know, he was still a kid, but, you know, when he was a little kid, that shit wasn't around because he was born in 91, so he was 10 when I was born. Um, but, uh, see, I, me personally, I grew up with that lot of technology. I didn't have a phone until I was 18. I didn't have any of that stuff. Like, I didn't have a PS4, nothing, nothing like that. No we nothing. Didn't have none of that shit. I had to find my own phone, pretty much, and do it, uh, you know, figure out what I wanted to do to have fun, right? So... I learned how to do that and be like that, you know what I mean, and be spontaneous, come up with shit, you know, work on something or fucking go out, you know, walk around the woods and, you know, stalk deer just for fun, <laughs> you know, whatever shit like that, just walk, go, you know, walk down the road tracks and just go and walk and just walk and walk, and go over to my, to my buddy's farm and just <laughs> talk to his cows and shit, yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, I was a uh, kind of a bit of a loner, I guess, you know, like doing my own thing. And I didn't have, you know, a screen in front of my face all the time. So, you know, I learned how to be happy without one. Uh, and I'm grateful for that. But it was kind of weird growing up being surrounded by all these kids that have all the technology and all this stuff. And not having that in my home, at least not available to me, really. So, yeah. That's how I grew up. But, you know, like most... I'm one of the very few people in my generation, very, very few people in my generation in America that grew up like that. And uh, it's, it's been different, you know, and it taught me a lot. You know, I, I didn't understand it and I hated it when I was when I was younger and now I'm starting to understand why. And I'm also kind of grateful for it because I learned how to be more creative, more productive, a harder worker, I think, too. Uh, just more motivated by not having that stuff around. But... Anyway, keep going. Yeah, they're not all citified and stuff, and they don't they don't think they have to talk a certain way and stand up to men and all this bullshit. They're just girls being girls, just enjoying being girls, because there's nothing wrong with that. It's fine. It's normal. <laughs> you know, and they don't have to put on airs and pretend to be somebody they're not and all this other shit and keep up appearances. They're just them. And that's the kind of girl that, uh, that I believe a man needs, you know what I mean? And I believe I have that in the person that I'm talking to, that I'm with, and I don't know. I mean, I, I guess I do have my trust issues from 
you know, bad experiences, bad relationships, which everybody has been in at least once, but, you know, regardless, it's getting to the point where, you know, I'm just not focused on petty little things, you know, and little, you know, he said, she said shit, you know, I'm just past that already, like, I'm just turning 20 now, and I'm already past that, because I got so dragged into that shit, man, you know, when we talk sweeter here on the outskirts, it's true, man, it's true, they do, <laughs> they really do. Songs hit different when written and signed by us, because all these uh, you know record labels and stuff are having you know uh, country singers uh, sing these songs, whatever that are politically correct and don't you know delve into certain things and don't talk about certain things that could offend people, right? Bro, who gives like? When did country music like lose its balls, man? See, this is why we like Go Church, because he sings country music with balls, <laughs> like straight up. Anyway. red car looked like a 60s car in there maybe muscle car or something and I don't know the tail end of it looked like a 64 Plymouth Belvedere kind of like uh, like uh, Richard Petty one of his uh, one of his stock cars back in the 60s had a 64 Belvedere body if somebody can recognize that car and confirm that for me I want to know because that's one of my favorite cars I love that I love that car body it's freaking gorgeous anyway awesome song man you know and it you know some people a lot of people, a lot of people who grew up in a small town don't really appreciate what they have and, you know never leaving you know like just staying in the same place all their childhood a lot of people don't appreciate the value of that until much later in life so for all y'all that know what that's like treasure man come from somebody who didn't have that growing up you know treasure that shit appreciate it respect it you know you might not realize it but it's an opportunity that some people would kill for. <laughs> Good song, man. Good music video, as always. You know, Thomas Turner. I mean, and you know, and, you know, and Belus and everybody. You know, always putting together awesome stuff. You know, good work. Thanks for watching, guys. You know, like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what y'all think. I mean, I know my videos suck, and I go on these long ass rants, but hey, you know, it's my channel, and uh, I'm not that worried about viewers, really. You know, I mean, if if you like it and you watch it, great. And if not, you know. There's lots of other channels to watch. This is me. Anyway, uh, I respect the church as well. Creek Squad, man. Showing love. Y'all have a good day.